The air was thick with the smell of decay and the overgrown bushes scratched at her legs as Sarah made her way up the winding gravel path. Her heart pounded in her chest, but she couldn't turn back now. She had to see it. The house on Ethel Road. It had been abandoned for years, a dark, looming structure with boarded up windows and a roof that sagged under the weight of time. No one in town spoke of it anymore, but whispers lingered about the strange events and the family that disappeared one stormy night decades ago. The house had been left untouched, standing as a silent testament to a forgotten tragedy. Sarah, a journalist who prided herself on uncovering the truth behind local legends, was drawn to it. The mystery of the house had haunted her since childhood, and now, with no other leads to chase, she was finally here. The front door creaked as she pushed it open, its sound like a scream into the empty woods. Inside, the stale air was suffocating. Dust coated everything, the broken furniture, the peeling wallpaper, the grand staircase that led to the second floor. But what caught Sarah's eye was the door at the end of the hallway. It was unlike the others. Um, painted red, its surface was scratched and dented as though someone or something had tried desperately to claw their way out or in. She approached it slowly, her steps echoing through the silent house. Something about the door felt wrong, an unsettling heaviness that seemed to seep into her bones. She could feel her breath growing shallow, her pulse quickening, yet she was unable to stop herself from reaching for the knob. Locked. Sarah frowned, tugging at the handle harder. It didn't budge. She searched her bag for something, anything, that might help her force it open, but all she had was a set of thin metal hairpins. They might work, she thought, though she wasn't sure why she was so determined. As she knelt by the door, working the pins into the lock, a noise echoed from upstairs. Footsteps. Her blood ran cold. Sarah froze, her heart hammering in her chest. There shouldn't be anyone here. She had checked the entire first floor, and the house was completely empty. She was sure of it. But the footsteps continued, slow and deliberate, pacing back and forth. Then, without warning, they stopped. Silence. Sarah strained to listen, waiting for any sign of movement, but there was nothing, just the deafening quiet of the abandoned house. Slowly, she returned to the lock, twisting the pins until, with a soft click, the door gave way. The smell hit her first, a sickly, metallic scent that made her stomach churn. She gagged, covering her mouth as she pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room was dark, the only light coming from the crack in the boarded-up window, but it was enough. Sarah could see the blood. It was everywhere, smeared across the walls, pooled on the floor, dried into thick black stains. Her breath caught in her throat as she stared, horror creeping up her spine. In the center of the room was an old wooden bed frame. The mattress was missing, but the chains were still there, bolted into the bedposts. And the walls, oh God, the walls were covered in scratches, like someone had tried to claw their way out. Sarah backed up, her head spinning. The room felt wrong, too wrong. Her vision blurred, and the air grew thick with an oppressive weight that pressed down on her chest. She had to leave, now. But as she turned to go, the door slammed shut with a deafening bang, trapping her inside. Her hands fumbled at the handle, but it wouldn't open. Panic surged through her as she yanked and pulled, but the door held fast. Then she heard it, a low whisper. You shouldn't have come here. Sarah froze, her breath caught in her throat. She slowly turned around and there, standing in the center of the room, was a figure. A woman, pale and translucent, with dark, hollow eyes and a face twisted in sorrow and rage. The ghost took a step toward her, the air around her growing colder. You can't leave, the spirit said, her voice barely more than a hiss. You're mine now. Sarah backed up, her heart pounding, her mind racing. She didn't know what to do. She was trapped, and the spirit wasn't going to let her go. The figure drew closer her fingers stretching out towards Sarah's throat. The room spun, the shadows lengthening, pulling Sarah deeper into the darkness. She tried to scream, but no sound came out, and then everything went black. Sarah woke with a start, gasping for air. Her throat burned as though she had been suffocating, her body trembling as her vision slowly cleared. The room was dark, and for a moment, she didn't know where she was. But the smell, that sickening smell, brought it all rushing back. The blood, the ghost, the door that wouldn't open. She shot to her feet, her heart still pounding. The door loomed in front of her, closed and locked as before. Her hands trembled as she reached for the handle, but this time when she twisted it, the door creaked open with ease. 
Cold air rushed in, making her shiver as she stepped out into the hallway. The house was silent, as if the ghost had never appeared, as if the blood-stained room had been a figment of her imagination. But Sarah knew better. She had felt the ghost's fingers brushing against her skin. She had heard her voice. You're mine now. Those words echoed in her mind as she stumbled down the hallway, desperate to get out. The front door was just ahead, its cracked glass reflecting her distorted, pale face. But something inside her, some dark curiosity she couldn't shake, made her stop. She glanced over her shoulder, her gaze drawn back to the red door. Why had the ghost tried to stop her from leaving? Whatever happened in that room wasn't an accident. Someone, something, was trying to keep a terrible secret locked away. And now, Sarah had seen too much. The thought sent a chill down her spine, but instead of fleeing, she turned back toward the stairs. She needed to know the truth. Why had the room been sealed for so long? What had happened to the family that vanished? Her instincts screamed at her to leave, but the questions tugged at her, pulling her deeper into the house. Sarah took a step toward the stairs, then another, her hands brushing the dusty railing as she climbed. As she reached the second floor, the sound of soft whispers returned. They drifted through the hallway like a breeze, faint but unmistakable. She followed them, her footsteps growing quieter as the floor creaked beneath her weight. The whispers led her to another door, this one smaller and less conspicuous, tucked away at the far end of the house. The air around it felt colder, heavier. Sarah hesitated for a moment, her hand hovering over the doorknob. Her heart raced. She knew whatever was behind this door could be even worse than what she had seen downstairs. But she couldn't turn back now. She had to know. With a deep breath, she pushed the door open. The room beyond was unlike the others. It was pristine, untouched by time or decay. The furniture was still in place, a bed made with crisp white sheets, a vanity table with a small mirror resting on it. It looked like someone had just left, as if they might return at any moment. But what caught Sarah's attention was the journal on the nightstand. She stepped inside, her fingers brushing the cover of the leather-bound book. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, as if they were urging her to read. She opened the journal carefully, the pages brittle with age, and began to read. September 12th. The house is quiet now. They say the room downstairs is cursed, that anyone who enters will never leave. But I've seen her, the girl in the red dress. She watches me from the shadows. She whispers to me in the night, telling me her secret. I don't know if I believe her, but I'm starting to feel it too. The pull, the need to go to the room, to see for myself. I can't sleep. I can't escape her voice. She says the blood on the walls is hers, that she died in there, alone and afraid. She says she's waiting for me, waiting for me to take her place. Sarah's hands trembled as she turned the page. September 17th, I went to the room. I don't know why, but I couldn't stop myself. The door was locked, but when I touched it, it opened. Inside, it was as she said, blood, chains, scratches on the walls. I felt her there, felt her watching me. I tried to leave, but the door slammed shut. I heard her laugh, a cold, hollow sound. She said it was my turn now, that I would never leave, that I would become just like her. I'm so scared. I can't leave. I don't know how much longer I can resist. She wants to trap me here forever. The journal ended abruptly, the last page torn and crumpled as if someone had ripped it out in a hurry. Sarah's hands shook as she closed the book, her mind racing. The ghost, the girl in the red dress, had been real. She had haunted the person who wrote the journal, tried to trap them in the blood-stained room just like she had tried to trap Sarah. But why? What did she want? A loud creak echoed from behind Sarah, breaking her concentration. She spun around, her heart leaping into her throat. There, standing in the doorway, was the ghost. Her dress was torn and tattered, stained with dark splotches of dried blood. Her eyes were wide, empty pits of darkness, and her mouth twisted into a grotesque smile. You read it, the ghost whispered, her voice filled with malice. Now you know the truth, but it doesn't matter. Sarah stumbled backward, her pulse racing. Stay away from me. The ghost stepped closer, her cold dead eyes locked on Sarah's. You'll stay here forever, she hissed, her smile growing wider, more sinister, just like me, just like the others. Sarah's back hit the wall, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She had to find a way out, had to escape before it was too late. But the ghost was blocking the door, her presence suffocating, her power overwhelming. There's no escape, the ghost whispered, her voice low and menacing. You belong to me now. 
The room grew colder, the walls closing in as Sarah's vision blurred once more. The ghost reached out, her icy fingers brushing Sarah's arm, and then everything went dark. When Sarah woke up, her body ached all over, and her head throbbed with a dull, pounding pain. The room was dim, and for a moment she couldn't tell where she was. Her eyes struggled to adjust to the murky light, and as the fog of unconsciousness lifted, the memories came flooding back. The ghost, the blood, the journal. She jolted upright, her heart racing. She was still in the upstairs room, the one with the journal. But something was different. The air was thick and cold, suffocating in its stillness, and the shadows seemed to stretch farther than they should, creeping up the walls like living things. Sarah's gaze darted to the door, but, but this time there was no sound of the ghost. The house was silent, and that silence felt far more terrifying than any whisper. She stood shakily, her knees weak, and moved toward the door, afraid that if she stayed still, something would crawl out from the darkness. But as she reached for the handle, she stopped. On the floor just by the threshold lay something that hadn't been there before, a photograph. Sarah bent down, her fingers trembling as she picked it up. It was old and yellowed, the edges frayed, but the image was clear. A young woman stood in the picture, her face turned away from the camera, her long hair cascading down her back. She wore a red dress. Sarah's blood ran cold. The woman in the picture, it had to be her, the ghost. But something about the photo felt wrong. The woman looked too alive, too real, and there was something about her stance, the way she stood rigidly in front of the house. Sarah flipped the photo over, her breath catching in her throat when she saw the words scribbled on the back. They never leave. Her hands shook, and she let the photograph fall from her fingers. She had to get out of this house. Whatever had happened here, whatever force was keeping her trapped, it was growing stronger. The ghost wasn't just haunting her. It was trying to take her, to keep her here forever. Sarah grabbed the door handle and yanked it open. The hallway beyond was dark, but she didn't care. She had to move. She had to escape before it was too late. But the moment she stepped into the hallway, the house shifted. The floor groaned beneath her feet, and the walls seemed to close in, twisting and warping as if the very structure of the house was alive. Her breath came in quick, shallow gasps. She tried to run, but the hallway stretched endlessly before her, growing longer and darker with each step. The doors lining the walls seemed to multiply, each one closed, each one hiding something she didn't want to see. Sarah, her name echoed through the hallway, soft and distorted, as though spoken from a great distance. But she knew it was the ghost. She could feel the cold fingers of its presence creeping along her skin, feel the weight of its eyes watching her from the shadows. You can't leave, the voice whispered. You belong to the house now. No, Sarah screamed, her voice cracking with panic. She sprinted down the hall, her legs burning with effort. But no matter how fast she ran, the door at the end of the hall, the one, the one that led to the stairs, remained agonizingly far away. You'll never escape. The ghost's voice was closer now, almost in her ear. Sarah felt a cold rush of air brush against her neck, and her steps faltered. She looked over her shoulder, and her heart nearly stopped. The ghost was there, floating just behind her, its eyes wide and black, its lips twisted into a cruel smile. The red dress clung to its skeletal form, blood stains spreading across the fabric as it reached for her, its long fingers inches from her throat. Sarah turned and ran faster, her breath hitching in her throat, but the ghost was relentless, its twisted smile growing wider with each step. Then, in the distance, a door creaked open. It was the door at the end of the hallway, the one leading downstairs. Light spilled into the corridor, warm and golden, and for a moment, Sarah felt a spark of hope. She pushed herself harder, her legs burning as she sprinted toward the light. But just as she reached the open door, just as she was about to escape, the floorboards beneath her feet gave way. Sarah screamed as she fell, her body plunging into darkness. She reached out, her fingers scraping against the jagged wood, but there was nothing to grab onto, nothing to stop her descent. She was falling into the house itself, swallowed by its endless depths, and then with a bone-jarring thud, she hit the ground. The impact knocked the wind out of her, and for a moment she lay there, gasping for air. Her body ached, her head spun, but she was alive. Slowly, painfully, she sat up. She was in the basement. The room was cold, the air damp and thick with the smell of rot. Dim light filtered in through the cracks in the ceiling, casting long, eerie shadows across the dirt floor. 
Old, rusted tools hung from the walls, their sharp edges gleaming in the faint light. But it wasn't the tools that caught Sarah's attention. It was the figures. They stood in the far corner of the room, barely visible in the shadows. Silent, unmoving figures. Men, women, all dressed in tattered clothes, their faces pale and gaunt, their eyes hollow. Sarah's heart raced. She tried to move, but her body wouldn't cooperate. Her legs felt heavy, as though they were sinking into the dirt. And then she realized they weren't figures at all. They were bodies. Corpses lined up against the wall, their lifeless eyes staring into the darkness. And as Sarah's gaze traveled over them, she saw something that made her blood run cold. One of the corpses was the woman in the red dress. Sarah screamed, her voice echoing through the basement, but the sound didn't carry far. The house swallowed it, just as it was swallowing her. The ghost appeared again, this time standing directly in front of her. Its eyes were locked on Sarah's, its lips curling into a grin. You see now, it whispered. No one ever leaves. Sarah tried to scream again, but no sound came out. The floor beneath her gave way, her body sinking into the dirt, pulled down by unseen hands. And as she was dragged deeper into the darkness, the last thing she saw was the ghost's smile. Sarah thrashed wildly as the cold dirt pulled her deeper into the ground, her legs already buried up to her knees. Her hands clawed at the earth, but it was no use. The ghost's laughter echoed through the basement, sharp and cruel, as if mocking her futile attempts to escape. The corpses, those lifeless, hollow-eyed bodies in the corner, seemed to watch her struggle, their expressions frozen in silent horror. Among them was the woman in the red dress, her bloodstained gown shimmering faintly in the dim light. Her lips were still twisted in that ghastly grin. Sarah's mind spun, panic rising in her chest as she tried to make sense of what was happening. Was this real? Had the house truly come alive to claim her, just as it had taken the others before her? The dirt crawled higher, reaching her waist now. Sarah's breath came in ragged gasps, her heart pounding against her ribcage. She tried to scream, but only a choked sob escaped her lips. She was sinking, and there was no way out. But then, just as her hope began to fade, the pressure around her legs suddenly released. Sarah stopped struggling, confused. The dirt, which had been pulling her under moments ago, now felt loose, as if whatever force had been dragging her down had let go. She hesitated, her pulse racing, afraid to move. Sarah, the voice whispered again, this time softer, almost pleading. You can't leave. You belong to me. She turned her head slowly, expecting to see the ghost hovering behind her, but the basement was empty. The bodies remained still, the air heavy with the stench of death, but the ghost was nowhere to be seen. Sarah pushed herself up, trembling, her legs aching as she climbed out of the loose dirt. Her fingers scraped against the rough stone floor, but she barely noticed the pain. She was alive. She had a chance. Staggering to her feet, Sarah glanced around the basement, searching for any sign of the ghost. But the shadows remained still, and the only sound was her own labored breathing. She had to get out. Now. Ignoring the corpses, she stumbled toward the far end of the room, her eyes locking onto a narrow staircase leading up to what looked like a door. It was old, warped from years of neglect, but it was her only chance of escape. Sarah's legs burned with exhaustion as she climbed the stairs, and each step feeling heavier than the last. Her mind screamed at her to hurry, to get out before the ghost reappeared, but her body was slow, her movements sluggish. It was as if the house itself was trying to keep her from leaving. Finally, she reached the top of the stairs. Her hand grasped the cold doorknob, twisting it frantically. For a heart-stopping moment, the door wouldn't budge, and a wave of panic washed over her. But then, with a groan, the door swung open. Sarah burst through, stumbling into what appeared to be an old, decaying kitchen. The walls were lined with dusty cabinets, and the floor was covered in broken tiles. The smell of rot was overpowering, and the air felt thick, oppressive. But she didn't care. She was one step closer to freedom. She moved quickly, her body trembling from both fear and exhaustion. The front door was just beyond the kitchen. She could see it, the light from outside barely visible through the cracked window. But just as she took a step toward it, the kitchen door slammed shut behind her with a deafening bang. Sarah froze, her heart leaping into her throat. Slowly, she turned around, dread pooling in her stomach. The ghost was there. It stood in the doorway, its form flickering like a shadow caught between two worlds. 
the red dress flowed around its skeletal figure, the bloodstains seeming to spread, darker and more vivid than before. Its eyes, those hollow black voids, were locked onto Sarah. You can't leave, the ghost whispered, its voice echoing through the room. You're mine. Sarah backed away, her mind racing. The door was right there, just a few steps away, but the ghost blocked her path, its presence so overwhelming, so suffocating, that she could barely breathe. Please, Sarah whispered, her voice trembling. Let me go. I didn't mean to. You opened the door. The ghost hissed, its voice growing louder, angrier. You set me free. Tears filled Sarah's eyes. I didn't know. I didn't. And now you will stay. The ghost growled, its face twisting with rage. Just like all the others. Sarah's back hit the counter, and she gasped, realizing she had nowhere left to run. Her fingers gripped the edge of the countertop, her breath coming in shallow, panicked bursts. The ghost moved closer, its form becoming more solid, more real. The temperature in the room plummeted, and Sarah could see her breath fogging in the air. The ghost's eyes burned into her, its voice soft but filled with malice. You'll never escape. In that moment, something snapped inside Sarah. Maybe it was the sheer terror that had been building inside her since the moment she'd entered the house. Maybe it was the realization that the only way out was to fight. But whatever it was, it pushed her over the edge. With a sudden burst of adrenaline, Sarah grabbed the closest object, a heavy, rusted pan, and swung it at the ghost. The pan passed through the ghost's body with a sickening hiss, the air around it rippling like disturbed water. For a moment, the ghost flickered, its form destabilizing. Sarah felt a surge of hope, but then the ghost reformed, its face twisted into a grotesque smile. That won't help you, it whispered, its voice dripping with cruelty. Nothing will. Sarah's heart sank, she was trapped, and she knew it. The ghost was too strong, too relentless. She couldn't fight it, but she couldn't just give up either. Desperately, she scanned the room for anything, anything, that might give her an edge. Her eyes landed on an old iron stove in the corner. It was ancient, rusted and covered in dust, but iron had always been said to have some kind of power over spirits. Without thinking, Sarah bolted toward it. The ghost shrieked, its form twisting and contorting as it realized what she was doing. Sarah reached the stove, yanked open the door, and grabbed the iron poker resting inside. It was heavy, but she lifted it with all her strength, swinging it wildly toward the ghost. The poker sliced through the air, and this time, when it made contact, the ghost let out a blood-curdling scream. Its body flickered violently, the edges of its form tearing like paper. The room shook, the air crackling with energy. You'll never leave, the ghost screamed, its voice distorting, becoming something inhuman. Sarah didn't stop. She swung the iron poker again and again, each blow weakening the ghost further, until finally, with one last ear-piercing shriek, the ghost exploded into a cloud of darkness. The room fell silent. Sarah stood there, panting, the poker still clenched in her trembling hands. The ghost was gone, but she knew it wasn't over. Not yet. The oppressive silence that followed the ghost's vanishing scream weighed heavily on Sarah. Her arms ached from swinging the iron poker, but she refused to let it go, her knuckles white from gripping it so tightly. She stood there, breathing hard, listening to the eerie stillness that had settled over the house. Was it really gone? She looked around, half expecting the ghost to reform at any moment, but the air was still, the shadows no longer twisting with malevolent intent. The house had fallen back into its slumber, the same quiet decay it had held before she entered the bloodstained room. Her gaze shifted to the front door. It was right there, just a few steps away. She could leave now. Run. But deep down, Sarah knew that something still lingered, something unfinished. She had fought the ghost, but she hadn't escaped. Not yet. The front door seemed too simple, too easy. And after everything she had experienced, Sarah had learned that nothing in this house was as it appeared. She hesitated, her mind torn. Every instinct screamed at her to run, to leave before the house could trap her again. But her feet stayed rooted in place, her thoughts drawn back to the journal she had found, to the words scrawled in a frantic hand. She's waiting for me, waiting for me to take her place. What if there's more to this? Sarah thought, what if there's something else I need to understand? The ghost had said she would never leave, that she belonged to the house. The others who had come before her, those bodies in the basement, they had never left either. Why? Taking a deep breath, Sarah glanced toward the hallway, 
the iron poker still clutched in her hand. She couldn't shake the feeling that the key to all of this was hidden somewhere else in the house. Something she hadn't found yet. Something that explained why the ghost had been trapped here in the first place. With one last glance at the front door, she turned away and walked back toward the hallway. Every step sent a shiver down her spine, her senses on high alert for any sign of the ghost. But the house remained eerily quiet. Sarah's footsteps echoed softly as she passed the locked room with the blood on the walls. She couldn't bring herself to look inside again. The sight of that blood, the chains, the horror of it all was, was still fresh in her mind. Instead, she climbed the stairs, heading back to the second floor. The whispers were gone now, but there was one room she hadn't yet explored, the master bedroom. At the far end of the hall, the door loomed ahead, slightly ajar. It was different from the others, more ornate, with intricate carvings etched into the wood. It felt like the heart of the house, the place where everything had begun. Sarah pushed the door open. The room beyond was unlike anything else in the house. It was grand, though time had not been kind to it. A massive canopy bed sat in the center, its velvet curtains moth-eaten and draped in dust. The wallpaper, once richly patterned, had faded to a dull gray, peeling at the edges. But despite the decay, there was something regal about the room, as if it had once been a place of importance. Sarah stepped inside, her eyes drawn to the large mirror that hung on the wall opposite the bed. It was cracked, the glass spider webbed with fractures, but it still reflected the room in eerie detail. She walked closer to it, her breath catching as she noticed something odd. In the reflection, the bed was perfectly made, the curtains pristine, and the wallpaper restored to its former glory. The room was beautiful, untouched by the passage of time. But what made Sarah's blood run cold was what she saw lying on the bed, the woman in the red dress. Sarah spun around, her heart hammering in her chest, but the bed was empty. When she looked back into the mirror, though, the woman was still there, lying still, her eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. She died here, a voice whispered behind her. Sarah whirled around again, her heart leaping into her throat. The ghost stood just a few feet away, its form less twisted now, more human, but no less terrifying. Its red dress was torn, the bloodstains still stark against the fabric. Its face, now clearer in the dim light, was gaunt, the eyes hollow, but the expression wasn't one of anger this time. It was sadness. You see now, don't you? The ghost whispered, its voice softer, more fragile. This is where it ended for me. This is where I was forgotten. Sarah's grip tightened on the iron poker, though the ghost made no move toward her. She glanced back at the mirror, at the reflection of the woman lying so still. You were killed here in the room downstairs. The ghost's hollow eyes seemed to flicker with something. Recognition, maybe. Yes, but my death was slow. They locked me in there, tortured me. And when it was over, they brought me here. I was meant to be forgotten, buried in the walls of this house. Sarah's throat tightened. The blood in the locked room, the journal, it all made sense now. The others, the bodies in the basement, they tried to leave too, didn't they? The ghost nodded slowly, her form flickering again, becoming more transparent. They wanted to help me, to set me free. But the house, it won't let anyone go. It holds us all here. Sarah's pulse quickened. Then how do I get out? There must be a way. The ghost's eyes, dark and void of life, seemed to pierce through her. You can't leave until you understand the truth. Sarah felt a chill creep over her. What truth? The ghost floated closer, its figure becoming wispier by the second. This house, it feeds on us. It fed on my suffering, my fear, and it fed on theirs too, but it doesn't need them anymore. The ghost's voice grew softer, almost a whisper. It needs you now. Sarah took a step back, her chest tightening. No, I'm not staying here. I'm getting out. The ghost's twisted smile returned. The house won't let you. But maybe. But Sarah's breath hitched. Maybe what? Maybe if you give it something else, a way to keep its power. The ghost whispered, her voice fading as her form began to disintegrate into the air. It doesn't care about me anymore. Only you. And if you leave... The house will starve. Sarah's mind raced. The house had trapped her, just as it had trapped the ghost and the others. But there was a way out, a way to break the cycle. She looked at the mirror again. The woman in the red dress was gone. Only the empty bed remained. The ghost was offering her a choice. Without hesitation, Sarah dropped the iron poker, turned, and ran for the front door. 
It flung open as if it had been waiting for her all along, and Sarah burst through it, gasping for the cool, fresh air of the night. The house behind her seemed to groan, as though disappointed, but it didn't pull her back. Sarah didn't stop running until the house was far behind her. Um, she didn't look back. She didn't have to, because she knew that someone else would find the house and the cycle would begin again. Story number two. The wind howled outside as the storm battered the old house, rattling windows and creaking the ancient wooden floors. Emma stood at the base of the attic stairs, staring up into the yawning darkness above her. She hadn't been up there since her family moved in a few weeks ago. The house, with its century-old charm, had captivated her parents, but something about it always felt off. That night, the storm had knocked out the power, leaving the house eerily quiet, save for the wind's moan and the occasional creak from the timbers. Bored and uneasy, Emma had wandered the house with a flashlight, trying to shake the unsettling feeling that something was watching her. That's when she noticed the small trapdoor leading to the attic. She hesitated at the foot of the stairs. It's just an attic, she whispered to herself, as though saying it aloud would make it true. But her gut twisted, a knot of unease that told her to turn back. Yet something else, something she couldn't quite name, urged her forward. Step by step, the narrow staircase groaned beneath her weight, the flashlight beam cutting through the thick dust hanging in the air. The attic was a cramped, suffocating space filled with forgotten relics of the past, dusty furniture, old boxes, and cobweb-covered trunks. She swept the light across the room, landing on a small, wooden chest tucked into the far corner. Drawn to it, Emma knelt before the chest, her fingers trembling slightly as she fumbled with the latch. It opened with a creak, releasing a puff of stale air. Inside, buried beneath moth-eaten blankets, was an old leather-bound diary. She picked it up carefully, noticing the name scrawled across the first page in delicate handwriting, Eliza Montgomery, 1954. Her heart skipped a beat. This house had been owned by the Montgomery family decades ago, but she hadn't given much thought to who lived here before. What had happened to them? Why had they left? With a sense of mounting curiosity, Emma flipped through the fragile pages. The ink was faded but still legible, the diary detailing Eliza's mundane daily life at first. But the further Emma read, the more she noticed a change. The tone grew darker. The words once lighthearted became tinged with dread. Eliza had started hearing strange noises at night, whispers, footsteps, things moving on their own. Emma's breath caught in her throat. A sudden rush of cold air swept through the attic, making her shiver. She glanced around, half expecting to see someone there, but the attic remained still, cloaked in the gloom of the storm. She wanted to stop reading, but something compelled her to continue. The next entry sent a chill down her spine. August 13th, 1954, the dreams are back, every night the same one. The girl with the pale face standing at the foot of my bed, staring. She doesn't speak, but her eyes, they're so hollow, like they're full of shadows. It's getting harder to tell what's real and what's a dream. I'm afraid to sleep, but even when I'm awake, I feel her presence, always watching. Emma's hand trembled as she clutched the diary. She glanced over her shoulder, the oppressive silence of the attic pressing in on her. For a moment, she swore she heard a faint whisper, like the rustle of fabric moving in the dark. She spun around, heart pounding, but the attic was empty. Another entry, written just a day later, was messier, more frantic. August 14, 1954. I can't take it anymore. She's here. I know it. She follows me everywhere, even when I leave the house. I can feel her cold breath on the back of my neck, a memph hear her footsteps in the hall. But when I turn around, there's nothing. I don't know what she wants, but I'm afraid. I'm so afraid. Emma's pulse quickened. The air in the attic felt thicker, heavier. She shut the diary, her hands shaking. She needed to get out of there. As she turned to leave, the attic door slammed shut with a deafening bang. She dropped the flashlight in her panic, the beam flickering as it rolled across the floor. Scrambling to her feet, Emma ran to the door, yanking at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. It was as if something was holding it closed from the other side. Suddenly, a low creak echoed through the attic. Emma froze, her eyes darting around the room. In the corner of her vision, she saw movement, just a slight shift in the shadows. Her throat tightened in terror. Something was there. Slowly, she turned to face the corner where the chest had been. The shadows seemed to pulse, thickening, coiling into a shape, a figure, 
A girl, her face pale and hollow, her eyes two dark voids staring straight at Emma. The air in the room turned frigid, Emma's breath coming out in visible puffs. The girl took a step forward, her movements slow, deliberate, like she was savoring the fear radiating from Emma. Emma backed away, her hand still clawing at the door handle, tears burning in her eyes. Please, she whispered, barely able to form the words. Please let me out. The girl's head tilted slightly, as if considering Emma's plea. Then, with a soft, barely audible whisper, she spoke. She'll find you, just like she found me. The door behind Emma burst open, sending her tumbling down the stairs. She hit the ground hard, gasping for breath, her heart racing in her chest. When she looked back up into the attic, the figure was gone, the shadows still. But in the back of her mind, a thought lingered, a nagging feeling she couldn't shake. Eliza's story wasn't just something from the past, it was starting all over again. Emma barely slept that night. Every time she closed her eyes, she saw the girl. The hollow eyes, the pale face, the whisper that seemed to echo endlessly in her head. She'll find you, just like she found me. Morning brought a dull gray light to the house, but it did little to shake the oppressive weight that had settled over Emma. She found herself drawn back to the diary, despite every rational part of her mind screaming to leave it alone. But something had started and now she was caught in its pull. At breakfast, her parents noticed her pale complexion and distant look. Everything all right, hon? Her mom asked, concern creasing her brow. Emma nodded absently. Yeah, just didn't sleep well. The storm kept me up. Her father chuckled. Well, storms like that tend to make this old house creak more than usual. Probably a lot of strange noises last night, huh? Emma forced a weak smile. Yeah, strange noises. She quickly finished her toast and excused herself, her thoughts already drifting back to the attic. She spent the morning in her room, the diary resting on her lap. Emma hesitated for a long time before opening it again. Part of her feared what more she would uncover, but another part, an even stronger part, needed answers. Eliza Montgomery wasn't just some girl who had lived here 50 years ago. There was something more, something that tied them together. Her hands trembled as she flipped to the next page. August 15th, 1954, I saw her again last night in the mirror. She was standing behind me, her reflection clearer than mine. I'm starting to think she's trying to tell me something, but I can't understand what. Every time she appears, it feels like she's getting closer, like she's trying to step into my world. I'm scared of what will happen when she does. Emma's heart skipped a beat. The mirror. There was an old, ornate mirror hanging in the hallway just outside her bedroom. She had always thought it was a beautiful, albeit eerie, piece of furniture. But now, the thought of it sent a chill crawling down her spine. She stood up, unable to resist the urge to check. Stepping cautiously into the hallway, she approached the mirror, her reflection staring back at her, wide-eyed and tense. For a moment, everything seemed normal. But then, she noticed it. Just beyond her reflection in the far corner of the hallway, something shifted. Her blood turned to ice as she turned her head slightly, scanning the hallway. There was nothing there. No one. But when she looked back into the mirror, she saw it again. A faint, shadowy figure standing just out of sight. Her breath hitched. She wanted to run, but her legs refused to move. Slowly, she forced herself to reach out and touch the mirror, her fingertips brushing against the cool glass. The surface felt wrong, colder than it should have been. As her hand lingered there, a soft, almost imperceptible breath fogged up the glass from the other side. Emma jerked her hand away, her heart pounding in her chest. She staggered backward, breaking eye contact with the mirror and hurried back into her room, slamming the door behind her. Her pulse raced and her thoughts spiraled. What was happening? Who was the girl in the mirror? And what did she want? Sitting back on her bed, she opened the diary again, her eyes scanning the next few entries. They became more erratic, the handwriting jagged and uneven. August 17th, 1954. She's in my room at night. I can hear her breathing, feel her cold presence beside my bed. But when I open my eyes, she's gone. I don't know how much longer I can take this. I'm so tired, so scared. Emma's hands shook as she read the final sentence. It was too familiar. Last night, she had felt that same cold presence in the attic, had heard the whisper that seemed to come from nowhere. The next entry was shorter, but somehow more terrifying. August 18th, 1954. She's in the mirror again. Only this time, she smiled. Emma's stomach churned and her throat tightened in fear. 
A sharp knock on her door made her jump. Her mom's voice broke through her spiraling thoughts. Emma, are you okay in there? She forced herself to breathe, trying to sound normal. Yeah, I'm fine. Just working on something. Okay, well, let me know if you need anything. As soon as her mom's footsteps faded, Emma locked her door. She had to know what happened to Eliza. The girl in the mirror wasn't just a ghost. She was something more. She had left behind clues, and now it was Emma's turn to figure them out. Flipping the page, Emma found another entry, but this one was strange. The handwriting wasn't Eliza's anymore. It was shakier, messier, as if written in a rush. August 19, 1954, Eliza is gone, but she isn't. She's still here, trapped in the mirror. She's trying to take someone else. I have to stop her. If you're reading this, don't let her in. Don't look at her. She's... The entry stopped abruptly, the last sentence trailing off into an unreadable scrawl. Emma's heart raced as her mind pieced it together. Eliza hadn't been haunted by the girl in the mirror. She had become her. A cold realization settled over her as she glanced back at the mirror in the hallway. Eliza was still there, watching, waiting. And Emma had just taken the next step in reliving her nightmare. The attic, the mirror, the whispers. They weren't coincidences. They were a warning, one Emma had failed to heed. Now, the same thing that happened to Eliza was happening to her. The lights flickered and a soft creak came from outside her room. Emma stood frozen, her eyes fixed on the door. Slowly, almost unwillingly, her gaze drifted back to the mirror in the hallway. Through the crack in the door, she could see the faint outline of a figure standing in the reflection, waiting for her to look again. Emma backed away, her body trembling. She needed to get out of the house. She needed to. A cold hand touched her shoulder. Emma's heart nearly stopped as she whipped around, expecting to see the hollow-eyed girl from the mirror standing behind her. But there was nothing. Just the cold, empty air of her bedroom. Her pulse thudded in her ears, but the room remained still, the faint ticking of her clock the only sound breaking the silence. She stumbled backward, her mind reeling. Had she imagined it? The touch had felt so real, so cold. She could still feel the icy chill creeping through her skin where the hand had been. But there was no one there. For a long moment, Emma stood in the middle of her room, paralyzed, her eyes darting to the diary on her bed, then back to the crack in her door where the mirror's edge was just visible. Her breath came in shallow gasps, fear constricting her chest like a vice. She didn't want to look again. She couldn't. But she had to. Slowly, Emma stepped forward her hand trembling as she reached for the door. She didn't dare open it wider. She only peered through the narrow gap, her gaze darting to the mirror. The hallway was empty. The reflection showed only the dark wooden walls and the faint outlines of her family's belongings. For now, the girl was gone. But the sensation of being watched lingered. She could feel eyes on her, even though no one was there. It wasn't just paranoia. It was something deeper, something that gnawed at her from the inside telling her that she was no longer alone in this house. Emma closed the door carefully, her heart pounding in her chest. She leaned against it, taking slow, steady breaths. Panic wasn't going to help. She had to think, had to figure this out before it was too late. She turned back to the diary, the weight of its presence pulling at her like a dark gravity. If Eliza had fallen into the mirror's trap, then Emma needed to understand what had happened, how Eliza had been taken. She flipped quickly to the final pages, her fingers skimming over the last entries. But there was no more writing, just blank pages stretching to the back of the book. With growing dread, she realized the diary wasn't finished. It simply stopped, as if Eliza had disappeared before she could write again. Emma's stomach churned. Was she next? Was this how it began for Eliza too? The cold whispers, the ghostly girl in the mirror, the growing feeling of being watched. It was all happening again. Her phone buzzed suddenly, shattering the tense silence. She snatched it up, desperate for any distraction. It was a message from her best friend, Mia. Mia, hey, haven't heard from you in a while. Everything okay? Emma stared at the screen, her fingers hesitating over the keyboard. How could she explain this? She couldn't tell Mia that she was being haunted by the ghost of a girl trapped in a mirror. Mia wouldn't believe her. Hell, Emma could barely believe it. Instead, she typed a short reply. Yeah, I'm fine. Just been busy with... stuff. There was a long pause before Mia's response. If you say so. But you've been acting weird since you moved into that creepy house. Want to hang out later? 
Emma stared at the message, her thoughts racing. Maybe she did need to get out of the house. If nothing else, it would give her a chance to clear her head, to escape the suffocating feeling that had settled over her since she found the diary. She quickly typed back, Emma, yeah, let's meet up. The thought of leaving the house was a relief, even if it was only for a few hours. But as she closed her phone, a soft thud echoed from the hallway, like the sound of footsteps. Emma's heart clenched in her chest. She turned toward the door, her breath catching. There it was again, a slow, deliberate step, and then another. The footsteps were coming closer. Her fingers dug into the edge of her bed as she listened, frozen in place. She didn't dare open the door this time. She didn't want to see who or what was walking through the house. But the footsteps stopped just outside her door, the shadow beneath the crack growing darker, as if something or someone was standing right there. Emma swallowed hard, her body trembling. She reached for the doorknob, gripping it tightly. Then, with a deep breath, she yanked the door open. Nothing. The hallway was empty, just as it had been before, but the mirror, her eyes were drawn to it immediately. This time, she saw the girl clearly. She was standing just beyond the edge of the glass, her eyes dark, empty voids staring directly at Emma. The reflection was wrong, warped as though the girl was trapped behind a barrier, trying to break through. Emma gasped, stepping back instinctively, but the girl's gaze never wavered. Slowly, the girl raised one hand and placed it against the glass. Her lips moved, but no sound came out. Emma's heart pounded in her ears as she watched, horror crawling up her spine. The girl's lips moved again, more urgently this time, forming silent words. Emma couldn't make out what she was saying. The girl's eyes grew wider, her expression more desperate. Her pale fingers pressed harder against the glass, and for the first time, Emma saw cracks forming in the surface of the mirror, spidering out from where the girl's hand touched the glass. No, Emma whispered, stumbling backward. No, no. But the girl's movements became frantic, her lips moving faster, her hands slamming against the glass now, the cracks spreading further with each hit. The whole mirror trembled, rattling against the wall, and Emma could feel the pressure building in the air, like something was about to break through. In a blind panic, Emma grabbed the edge of her bed and threw herself toward the door, running down the stairs as fast as her legs could carry her. The house seemed to close in around her, the walls narrowing, the air growing thick and oppressive. Behind her, she could hear the shattering of glass, the sound of footsteps chasing after her. She burst through the front door, uh, gasping for breath as the cool outside air hit her skin. Her chest heaved, her heart pounding like it was about to burst. She stumbled out onto the lawn, looking back at the house. The windows stared down at her, dark and silent. There was no movement, no sign of the girl. But she knew. The girl was still in there, waiting. Emma's phone buzzed again. Mia, I'm outside. Come on out. Emma looked down the street and saw Mia's car pulling up to the curb. She wanted to run to her friend to explain everything, but her legs felt like lead. Something was keeping her rooted to the spot. Something that felt like invisible hands clutching at her ankles, trying to drag her back inside. With a deep breath, Emma forced herself to move, walking slowly toward Mia's car. She needed to get away, even if just for a little while. But as she walked, she could still feel it. The weight of the house pressing down on her, the cold presence lingering just behind her, always watching. The girl wasn't done with her yet. Mia's car was a lifeline. As Emma slid into the passenger seat, she felt a temporary sense of safety wash over her, though it was fleeting. The weight of what had just happened lingered, the feeling of eyes boring into her from the house. Mia turned to her with a smile, but it faltered the moment she saw Emma's face. Whoa, you look like you've seen a ghost. Emma tried to laugh it off, but the sound came out strained. Yeah, you could say that. Mia raised an eyebrow, glancing at the house. Okay, spill, what's going on? Emma hesitated, her fingers curling into fists on her lap. She didn't know where to begin. The diary? The girl in the mirror? The cold, invisible touch on her shoulder? It all sounded too insane, too unbelievable. But if anyone would listen to her, it was Mia. Do you ever feel like something is watching you? Like, from the shadows? Emma asked, her voice low, cautious. Mia frowned. Not usually. Why? Emma sighed, looking down at her hands. She didn't know how to explain the creeping dread that had been following her since she found the diary. But Mia was staring at her, waiting. So Emma swallowed hard and started talking. I found this old diary in the attic. It belonged to a girl who lived in the house. 
Eliza Montgomery. She wrote about strange things happening. At first, I thought it was just stories, but then she trailed off, shaking her head. I think she's still in the house, Mia, or at least part of her is. Mia stayed quiet, her gaze skeptical but not dismissive. You mean like a ghost? Emma nodded, biting her lip. It's more than that. She's trapped in the mirror. And I think, I think she's trying to get out. Mia glanced toward the house again, then back at Emma. Okay, I'm not saying I believe in ghosts, but you look seriously freaked out. What exactly happened? Did you see something? Emma's heart pounded as she replayed the events in her mind. The girl's hollow eyes, the cracking mirror, the overwhelming cold that seemed to follow her everywhere. I saw her, Mia. She was in the mirror and she was trying to. Her voice caught and she shuddered. Break through. I don't know how, but I think if I stay in that house, she's going to take me too. Just like she took Eliza. Mia's expression softened, but there was still uncertainty in her eyes. Okay, so what are we supposed to do? You can't just leave your house forever with to figure out what's going on. Maybe there's some logical explanation. Old houses have weird vibes, you know? Emma shook her head, her voice rising. This isn't just old house vibes, Mia. Something's wrong, and I feel like I'm next. For a moment, silence stretched between them. Then Mia sighed and reached over, squeezing Emma's hand. All right, let's go inside, together. Maybe if we confront it, we can figure out what's going on. Emma's stomach dropped. The idea of going back into the house, back to the mirror, made her skin crawl. But Mia was already getting out of the car, her mind made up. Mia, wait, Emma called, scrambling to follow her. We don't even know what we're dealing with. Mia glanced back, her usual confidence masking any fear she might have felt. Exactly. That's why we need to go in there and see for ourselves. If something weird is going on, we'll figure it out. Together. Emma's legs felt weak as she followed Mia up the path to the front door. The house loomed above them, its windows dark and unwelcoming. As they reached the door, Emma felt that cold presence again, like invisible fingers trailing down her spine. Mia pushed the door open and stepped inside. Emma hesitated for a second before following, the air inside immediately heavier, colder. The atmosphere was thick with something unspoken, and the house seemed to hum with an unseen energy. All right, Mia said, glancing around the dim hallway. Where's this mirror? Emma swallowed, her throat dry. Upstairs, in the hallway outside my room. Mia led the way, her footsteps loud in the oppressive silence. Emma followed close behind, every step a battle against the mounting dread rising in her chest. The house felt even more alive now, as if it had been waiting for her return. They reached the landing, gish, and there it was, the mirror. It hung on the wall, its surface pristine, as if the cracks Emma had seen earlier had never existed. But the memory, the memory of the girl's face, her desperate attempts to break through, was seared into Emma's mind. Mia stepped up to the mirror and tapped it lightly with her finger. Looks fine to me. Are you sure you weren't just seeing things? I'm telling you, it was real, Emma said, her voice trembling. I saw her. She, she was in there, trying to get out. Mia studied the mirror for a moment, then turned to Emma with a sigh. Okay, maybe we're missing something. You said this all started after you found that diary, right? Emma nodded. Yeah, that's when everything got worse. Mia thought for a moment, then her eyes lit up with a sudden idea. What if the diary is the key? Maybe there's something in there that can explain all of this. Some kind of answer. Emma hesitated. I've read through most of it. It just stops. Eliza didn't get a chance to finish it. Mia shook her head. But you said she was taken. Maybe there's something in the last few pages, something she didn't get a chance to write down. It's worth a shot. Reluctantly, Emma led Mia back to her room, where the diary still lay open on her bed. The room felt cold again, even though the windows were shut tight. The sense of being watched had returned, stronger than ever. Mia picked up the diary and flipped through the last pages, her brow furrowed in concentration. There has to be something here, some kind of clue. But as Mia scanned the final entry, her expression darkened. Wait, look at this. Emma leaned over her shoulder, her eyes narrowing at the words scrawled in the margins of the page. They were faint, barely legible, as if they had been written in haste. The door is open. She's coming through. Emma's heart stopped. The door. Suddenly, the room felt colder, and the shadows seemed to deepen around them. Emma turned toward the door of her room, still shut, but she could feel it now. The same pressure from before, 
the feeling of something standing just on the other side, waiting. Mia, Emma whispered, her voice shaking. We need to leave, now. But before Mia could respond, a soft creak echoed from the hallway outside, followed by the unmistakable sound of footsteps, slow, deliberate, moving toward them. The door was open. The sound of footsteps grew louder, each step deliberate and slow. Emma's breath caught in her throat as she stared at the door. The same door that moments ago had been firmly shut. Now it stood slightly ajar, the gap between the door and the frame wide enough to let the cold air seep in. Mia dropped the diary, her face pale as the noise outside Emma's room crept closer. What the hell? She whispered, her voice barely audible. Emma felt Mia's panic rising, mirroring her own, but they were frozen in place, rooted to the spot by the sheer terror of what lay beyond the threshold. Mia, we need to go, Emma whispered, her voice trembling. We have to get out of here. But Mia didn't move. Her gaze was locked on the door, her face rigid with fear. The footsteps stopped right outside. A long, deafening silence followed, and for a moment, Emma hoped, prayed that whatever was on the other side had left. But then, the door creaked open slowly, inch by inch, revealing the dark hallway beyond. There, standing just outside, was the figure from the mirror. The girl, Eliza, her face ghostly pale, her eyes two black pits that seemed to devour all light. Her expression was blank, but her presence radiated an eerie, predatory intent. Emma stumbled backward, grabbing Mia's arm, trying to pull her away, but Mia stood transfixed, her wide eyes locked on Eliza. The air grew impossibly cold, frost creeping along the edges of the floor, the walls, the mirror. Eliza's gaze shifted, settling on Emma with a strange, knowing look. She's here for me, Emma whispered, the truth sinking in like a stone, just like she was for Eliza. Mia finally snapped out of her paralysis, pulling back toward the window. We have to go! Emma, come on! But even as they backed away, Eliza stepped into the room, her movements unnaturally slow, each step echoing like a soft whisper in the cold, suffocating air. She wasn't stopping, and the space between them and the door was shrinking fast. Emma felt her back hit the wall, and her eyes darted toward the window. The second floor drop wasn't far, but something told her that whatever awaited them outside wouldn't be as dangerous as what was in the room now. Emma, now! Mia shouted, grabbing the window's edge and yanking it open. The freezing air from outside blasted in, and without thinking, Emma pulled herself up and threw her leg over the sill. But before she could jump, she felt it, a cold, sharp tug on her ankle. She screamed, looking down to see Eliza's hand wrapped around her leg, her grip like ice, pulling her back toward the room. Mia grabbed Emma's hands, trying to pull her free, but Eliza's strength was inhuman. Emma felt herself slipping, her body being dragged back into the room, toward the mirror. No, Emma cried, her nails scraping against the window frame as she struggled. She kicked desperately at Eliza, but the girl's grip only tightened, her hollow eyes staring into Emma's with a terrifying emptiness. Mia held on, her face twisted with effort and fear. I've got you, Emma. Don't let go. But Emma could feel it. She was losing the fight. The cold was seeping into her bones, making her limbs weak, her mind foggy. Eliza's pull was relentless, dragging her closer and closer to the mirror that now reflected not just the room, but a dark, endless void behind Eliza. In that moment, Emma understood. The mirror wasn't just a reflection, it was a doorway. Eliza's trying to pull me in, Emma shouted, her voice shaking with terror. Mia's eyes widened as she realized what was happening. Without hesitation, she released one hand and grabbed the nearest object, a small wooden chair. In one swift motion, she swung it toward Eliza's grip, smashing it down on the girl's arm. There was a loud crack, and for the briefest second, Eliza's grip loosened. Emma didn't hesitate. She yanked her leg free and threw herself out of the window, crashing onto the grass below. The impact knocked the wind out of her, but she scrambled to her feet, adrenaline surging through her veins. Mia followed landing next to her, and together they ran, not looking back. They didn't stop until they were at the edge of the street, breathless, shaking, but alive. They turned toward the house. The windows were dark, the front door eerily still, as if nothing had happened. But they knew better. Inside, the mirror remained, and so did Eliza. Mia leaned over, gasping for breath, her face pale with disbelief. What, what the hell was that, Emma? Emma couldn't speak. She stared at the house, her mind racing. Eliza had been so close to pulling her into that mirror. 
into whatever dark place had claimed her 50 years ago. The realization hit Emma like a wave. Eliza wasn't the only one trapped there. The mirror was a prison, a doorway to something much darker. What do we do now? Mia asked, her voice shaking. We can't just leave it there. Emma knew she was right. The mirror wasn't just some haunted object. It was dangerous, and as long as it remained, it would keep reaching out, trying to claim someone else. We have to destroy it, Emma said, her voice steady despite the terror coursing through her. We can't let anyone else go through what Eliza went through. Mia nodded, though she looked terrified at the thought of going back inside. How do we even destroy something like that? I mean, it's, it's not just a mirror, Emma. It's something else. Emma glanced back at the house, dread clawing at her insides. She didn't know how they were going to do it. But one thing was clear. The house, the mirror, everything. It was tied to Eliza, and somehow they had to sever that connection. As they stood there, a cold wind swept through the street, rattling the branches of the old trees that lined the road. Emma felt the chill run through her, but this time it wasn't just fear. It was the realization that the house wasn't finished with them yet. The girl in the mirror was waiting, and she wasn't done. The next morning, Emma and Mia returned with tools, hammers, axes, anything they could find that might break the glass. The sun was high, but the house remained in shadow, as if it existed in a different world. They entered cautiously, the silence pressing in around them. The mirror hung on the wall, untouched, reflecting the hallway as if nothing had changed. But Emma knew better. She could feel Eliza's presence, lingering just beneath the surface. Without a word, Mia swung the hammer at the mirror, shattering the glass in a single blow. The pieces fell to the floor, glittering like shards of ice. For a moment, the air seemed to shift, the cold presence lifting, fading. But as the last piece of glass hit the ground, Emma noticed something in the shattered reflection. A faint smile. Eliza wasn't trapped anymore. She was free.